Welcome back, folks, to day three. It is uh, 1.09 p.m. Today is the 11th, the 11th of April. Welcome back, Tina. Welcome back, Gone By. It's part three. So far, this is what we've added. We've added uh, my little niece, Gabriella. She wanted an owl, so I put it in a thought bubble here. And then uh, Jenny Quest thought it'd be cool if it was the Tootsie Roll owl. So I thought I'd add the little kid. Good morning. thought I'd add the little kid. How many licks to the center of a koala? In typical Mad Magazine style, you know, they're always parroting other, um, you notice in the pages of Mad Magazine, they're always, they're always putting little references to, uh, to different things. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. So I'm just adding, I'm adding, adding details, adding, um, I think I, I think, I think. I'm pretty close to having most of the requests, which I'm, I'm putting in quotation marks, uh, the suggestions, you know, that people have participated with throughout throughout the days. And um, it's just been so much fun getting back into drawing again. And then on top of that, to just sort of do this, this, um, just, you know, cowabunga, dude, just... <laughs> Just diving into it and not knowing exactly, you know, how it's going to turn out. It's it's like the uh, acrobats up there. It's like the trapeze artists without the safety net. They don't they don't they don't know. They don't know if they're going to land on the, you know, where they're supposed to or not. So, ideally, by me demonstrating this kind of. This, this idea of just going for it, of just following an inspiration and seeing where it goes. Ideally, this will, you know, maybe it'll inspire others to kind of get out of their heads. There's a woman who popped up yesterday named uh, Cecile or Cecily. And she was talking about how her her dad, who's like 90-something years old, he still draws. He still paints. He's still, you know, still making stuff. And uh, I said, well, do you draw? And she says she hasn't for a while. And so I suggested to her, well, you know, go ahead and give it a try. No one's judging you. No one's, you know, really expecting something from you. So why not go ahead and, and try? Why not just go for it? So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe she'll start drawing too. Maybe she'll start doing some live art. So li little Tina, you too, you're too. you an art teacher, right? That, that must mean that you, that you draw. 
right? It'd be cool for you to do one of these too. Maybe you start up a live stream. My sister Jenny is doing macrame for the very first time and I suggested to her this morning that uh, maybe it would be a fun idea for her to go live and just kind of show. You know, when we do this stuff, we just dive into the unknown it's kind of cool because so many times we hear people overthinking things, you know, and it, and it stops them. Oh, is pen my favorite tool? Uh, yeah, I also like to paint too. So I prefer, I think I prefer drawing in, in pen than pencil. There's nothing against, you know, not that there's anything against pencils, but I do like, I do like the pen. I like the permanency of it. You gotta, you know, you, you're, you're, you're stuck with what's given to you and you gotta make something with it. As David Lynch calls it, the happy accidents. On his film sets, plenty of things will, will go astray and, uh, and he looks forward to it. He likes it. He actually likes the the unknown, the unexpected. What's your favorite tool to draw with, Tina? What do you like to draw with? Or do you even have a favorite tool? I mean, maybe you just, maybe you're like a chameleon with your art. You just, it just doesn't matter. Oh, you don't know? Well, okay, well, let me rephrase it. What do you, what do you like to draw with? What feels good in your hand? It's interesting how each pen has its own personality. Oh, you like clay. So you're a sculptor, a sculptress. Uh, that guy, Space Patrol, who's popped up on here, you gotta check out his channel. Space Patrol Adventures, he does a lot of claymation stuff that might inspire you to start doing claymation stuff. Stop motion. You haven't drawn for a long time, Tina? Why not? Is it... You know, right now is a good time to start. Anytime's a good time to start. Who are some of your favorite artists? Who do you like? I've been a big Salvador Dali fan myself. I like Salvador Dali. Surrealist. Any of the Surrealists? Ed Paschke, he's another one of my favorite artists. Painter from Chicago, he's gone now, but he used to draw in a style that looked very much like neon. It would have a glow around it. It looked like those neon signs. When you see the neon signs, and it's got that, that glow around it. Of course, Magritte. Magritte's another one. Which you may be familiar with, the guy who's got the... Uh, a lot of times he's got the apple for a head. The Magritte guy. He's got the apple for a head and a derby for a hat. Welcome back, Glamour D. Oh, you love Neon. What's his name again? Here, I'll type it in here. Ed. I think this is how you pronounce his... I think this is how you spell his last name. P-A-S-C-H-K-E. I believe that's it. Ed Paschke. Good, very cool artist. I mean, really, that's... He was regarded as one of the most innovative artists because he, he just made... He would draw these lines... And um, oh, oh, there we go. Oh, you just googled him. Yeah, look at look at his imagery. It's re he's really, really original. There's um, there's a really funny one. He would use an opaque projector. You know what an opaque projector is? They have those over in Taiwan. Opaque projector. Maybe they got a different name for it. The opaque projector is a machine, as one can guess. You 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 put the art into like a little tray, 
and then it projects that image up onto the wall. And so he would use that as his tool a lot of times. And so he would use that as a way to combine things. And uh, so there was one, there was a picture of, of a guy with an, with an accordion, opaque, um, O-P-A-Q-U-E, I think, O-P-A-Q-U, O, O-P-A-Q-U-E, I think that's how you spell it, opaque, O-P-A-Q-U-E, and so you'd put the art in there, and it would, you know, project it up on a wall, so then he would trace around that, and then he would put a another photo inside, project that up on a wall, and then he would draw over that, over the other image. So there's a really cool image you'll see if you if you look it up. Look up um, Ed Paschke, Marilyn Monroe, Accordion. And it, it's so funny because you see Marilyn Monroe, you know, in a completely unexpected way. Because who would ever expect to see Marilyn Monroe with an accordion? And... It's a really good tool to use. It's um, it's a great way to paint your drawings in a, a a good clean way, you know, in the way that you most want it to be. So if you let's say you draw, you draw um, you draw something, you go, man, I want to see this. I want to see this painted. Then you, you know, you can really get it perfect. Let's say a family portrait. Let's say if you want to do a family portrait, you know, anything really. It's it's a great way to really get it spot on. It's a big machine. I mean, it's a the from the olden days. I mean, I'm sure at this point in time they've, you know, they've probably found a way to to. I mean, they used to be these big metal objects. That were just, um, sort of square shaped, I guess, square-ish shaped. And get some shadows, but kind of like use cross hatching to kind of get some shadows back here with this. So Tina, you say you haven't drawn in a long time. What 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 is the last thing that you drew? What would you say is the the last thing that you can remember that you drew? For instance, do you have a sketchbook of any of your art? Do you know the artist Robert Crum? A lot of times on his art, he just goes by R. Crum. There's a really good documentary about him. Robert Crum, C-R-U-M-B-B, I believe. I think he had two B's in his name, Robert Crum. Oh, lotus! You like to draw. The, you like to draw the lotus. Lotus flower, huh? Let's draw another. So Robert Crumb, um, his daughter, saved all her drawings throughout her entire life. All of her drawings from all of her drawing books, and then she published it. How cool is that when you think about that? She published it. She put it out there into the world. It would it goes to show us that um something that's old to us is brand new to someone else. It's brand new to someone else. It's old to us, brand new to someone else. Just gonna hide these feathers, you know. I'm just so intimidated for drawing feathers, so I'm just gonna kind of hide them off into the corner. Maybe I'll draw a few more eyeball-looking feathers back there. Maybe that's what I'll do, just to add add to the spice, you know. So tonight, um, Yachtly Crew, which is the yacht rock band I'm in. We were going to we were going to set sail. I mean, we had a whole year's worth of of places that we were going to play. And then coronavirus struck and it put everything to a grinding halt. 
put everything to a grinding halt. We couldn't, you know, we couldn't go out and play anymore. So what we've been doing is we've been live streaming. Um, one of the members of our band, we call him Baba Bui. One of the members of our band, he, um, he always sets up cameras out there. He sets up maybe two or three cameras every time. And every once in a while, he'll post little snippets here and there on, on, on um, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. You know, he'll, 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 he'll put up a little bit of it. Um, but what's good about this is that, he, you know, he's, he has those archives. And so little did he realize, little did any of us realize that this whole situation was going to come up with the coronavirus. And so now we're making, you know, as they say, making lemons out of lemonade or making lemons, making lemonade out of lemons. And we've been live streaming on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. We've been live streaming our, um, our shows that he's, that he recorded. He's got in the archives, which has been very helpful. That's another example of something that's old, you know, what's old to you, what's old to each person is brand new to someone else who's never seen it or heard it. So, you know, one might think, oh my God, well, that's such an old show. You know, someone in the band might go, well, that's an old show. What the heck? But look it. Now we, now we're suddenly, we're seeing value in it, aren't we? We're seeing there, there's value in it. I've published two sketchbooks. I can't remember if I... Oh, thank you. Thank you, Glamma. Glamma D, you know, it's, it's a big deal to us because we get to interact with people in the chat bar. I love interacting with the people in the chat bar. I love it. I love hearing the stories of how people found us. I love hearing stories of how people met each other out on the dance floor. It's so exciting. It's a reunion for a lot of these folks who are used to, you know, some people at these shows, they, they, it's kind of like a classroom, you know, like... Oh, thank you, Glamadi. I think so. I think so. I think the fan base is growing. We're getting more and more subscribers to our YouTube channel. More and more subscribers. But, you know, the, some of these folks at our shows, they, they have sort of a, a special spot that they always like to stand in. <laughs> and um, it's kind of like a classroom. As you probably know, Tina, Students tend to sit in the same seats. They get comfortable in those spots. They get comfortable with the students that they're sitting next to. And um, they get, it's just, oh, you make a family night out of those. Oh, Glamma D, thank you. Sam 1-R-E-T. How do I pronounce your name there? Do I just call you Sam? Thank you for watching, Sam. You had a private channel, so I didn't follow you yet. I usually don't follow people who have a private channel. I like to see I like to see what I'm getting into, you know. I like to see what what it really it is that I'm following. I, if I'm going to follow people on social networks, it's not a, you know, for me it's not a popularity co contest so much as what what is it inspiring me? What is it inspiring me to do? How is it inspiring me? Um is someone following me on a social network just to unfollow me a few weeks later because they want to they want to look popular that you know they got a lot of followers on there those are bragging rights in some circles for folks we'll see i'm only following three people and i've got four thousand followers that's just not my cup of tea i'm more concerned about forming relationships you met me at tempe mission palms bar at the yc show e gads of course you did okay sam Thank you. I'll be following you then. I will be following your account. I can't do it now. We're, do we're doing this live. Yeah, uh, Sam, you, you and your wife, if I'm not mistaken, we had a cosmic conversation, right? And the first time we met was at the uh, private show, if I'm not mistaken, the private show, was it Malibu in Malibu? And I overheard you guys talk about a synchronicity. And then I tend to remember the people that I talk to who I, I share conversations about synchronicities with. It's one of my biggest... Some, some folks just love talking about sports. Some folks love talking about movies or uh, fashion. 
I get excited to talk about synchronicities, the cosmos, the universe, manifestation of reality, dreams, the fringe theories. Yes, Huntington Harbor Club. That's what it was. What's up, Merrick? Sam, yes. And you know what? That nice lady, the bartender at uh, Huntington Beach uh, Harbor Yacht Club, she sent me her book. And it's all about her synchronicities. It's all about synchronicities. So she overheard us talking. And then that's what made her join in the conversation. I mean, isn't that beautiful? The universe really brings people together. It's, it's astounding. It's astounding. Thank you for tuning in, Sam. Thank you too, Merrick. Wait, Merrick, you're Meredith, right? Or no? Or am I messing that up? Synchronicities, man. Synchronicities. The, the magic of the universe. That is where it is at. Not just 100... In addition to 100% of the time, one... One million infinities of the time. It's just an ongoing, never-ending, joyful... It's just joyful. Oh, Patrick. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry, Patrick. My friend Meredith is on here, and she's got an... Starts with M E R, and I forgot what her her um, screen name was. So thank you for watching, Patrick. Um. So Patrick and Sam, do you guys draw? Were you were you fans of? Uh, oh, you're from We Live on a Planet podcast. Kick ass. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. This is so cool that you follow. You know, this is cool. This is really cool to me. The fact that people have. Listen to the podcast. We become friends in the podcast universe, and then if and then it comes over and it translates over into other social networks. God, this is so that's another thing right there, man. We just never know, right? We just never know how we're going to affect the populace. We have no idea. You never know. I got friends in low places. I got friends in podcast places. Right? You never know. You never know where the friends are going to come from. It might be a Yachtly Cruise show. It might be a podcast. It might be overhearing someone talking about synchronicities at a bar. You know? Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. So this, so I've, I've been live streaming uh, three days now. This, these are some of the suggestions that I've gotten from people. I've asked for suggestions from people. This is all an improvised art. Uh, Tina and Glamma D have been here from the beginning. They've 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 watched this evolution take place, and uh, <laughs> thank you. I just I'm a, I'm a big on improvisation, the whole yes and concept, and uh, so I'm just adding, adding, adding. If you guys got any suggestions, there's still little spaces to add things in there. I can add more things in the thought bubble up there. Um. You know, over here in the corners here. I gotta tell you, these these uh, peacock feathers ugh, scared me. T intimidating. Thank you. Thank you. Tree frog. Okay, okay, okay. All right, yeah. There's space for a tree frog in there. There's. Th I'll, I'll put a tree frog in there. Let me write that down over here. Tree frog. You know this Mad Magazine? Oh, thank you. Okay, Tina. Tina, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Cox with the pox. What is going on? Are those chicken pox or small pox? Mm. And is your full name Coxix? Coxix with the chicken poxix? Dude, we live on a planet podcast. Thank you so much. I mean... When I first started up Anchor, I just started looking around for a podcast. Oh, yeah. You grew up reading Mad Magazine, Patrick? Oh, my God. Mad Magazine. Mad Magazine. So, more Trucker. So, yeah. When more Trucker died, um, I started just drawing and live streaming like this on the evening of his passing. In honor of him, in honor of Mad Magazine. I've got a subscription to Mad Magazine. And... Um, 
About a year ago, I got a subscription to Mad Magazine. As you know, they put out very few issues a year. One of the things I love is that they moved out to Burbank. Well, I mean, it sucks for the New York office. They had to close that up, but they moved out here to uh, Burbank. And one of my plans has continually been, and I've been emailing these guys, is to go in there and interview the current staff of Mad Magazine. I visited New York um, a number of years ago with my buddy Dave. And I actually went into the Mad Magazine offices. It was awesome. It was awesome. I'm going to draw a little tree frog, okay? So I think we're going to get a... See, someone suggested the tree's on fire. There's a, there's a koala bear up there. Tree's on fire, and it's getting the... Uh, Peacock feathers on fire. <laughs> I mean, geez. Nature and animals are just things that I've have always shied away from, you know? But it was it was so cool to go into those mad magazine offices and meet these people. And uh, you know, I asked them all about the artists and stuff, and they said, Oh no, the the, the artists, you know, they live wherever they live. Hold on a second, I gotta I'm looking up online here. Tree frog. Um and I went and, and I took a look through there. Oh, here's a little tree frog. Okay, okay. Let's see, let's see. These little guys. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Where do we put the tree frog? You know what? Maybe. Ooh, I got an idea. I have an idea. All right, so this is what we're going to try. Yeah, it was the coolest thing, man. They, they said all the artists live, you know, at their homes. They just send in the art. Can you imagine what the Mad Magazine offices must have been like way back in the day? That's one of my dreams is to make a Mad Magazine movie about those guys. William Gaines, Mort Drucker, of course, Jack Davis, all those guys. Cracked, a Cracked movie also. Did you guys read Cracked Magazine too? Poison Dart Frogs. Okay, let's see here. Poison dart frog. My computer's telling me to do an update. I'm like, dude, are you telling me that you're right now? You're kidding. You're kidding me. Poison poison dart frog. Oh, they are beautiful. After this, you guys, I, I do plan on uh, Space Patrol Adventures. I was just talking about you to Tina. Uh, Tina had to leave. Yeah, oh my God, Patrick, that would have been crazy back in the day in the Mad Magazine offices. Space Patrol, I was telling uh, Tina she was just in here. She had to leave. Uh, she was saying that she likes clay. And I told her about your your channel and how you do stop motion animation with with, with uh with clay and uh, so I strongly suggested that she checks you out all right we're looking up some of these my god these guys isn't it crazy these little creatures check this out check out these little guys there's so many kick-ass ones so my plan is I'm gonna have one kind of hanging on the back of the koala I suppose I could yeah Maybe hanging on the back of the koala, like piggyback riding him. You didn't read Cracked that much? One of my favorite artists in there was John Severin. Phenomenal artist, John Severin. Great artist. He went off to draw for the comic book Nam. Very good, very good comic. Al Feldstein. Is he, uh, oh gosh, please forgive me, Space Patrol. Is Al Feldstein, um... Is Al Feldstein, pardon me guys, I'm still looking for tree frogs here. I'm looking for, oh God, there's so many, you know, so many tree, I'm trying to pick a really good one that'll fit. Okay, here's, here's a kind of a, okay, I got one, I got one. These guys, man. Um... So Al Feldstein, par pardon me here, Space Patrol, is Al Feldstein a, uh, 
The owls are not what they seem. Who are you? Who, who? Who's Al Feldstein? Is he a man mantis shrimp? I will look up mantis shrimp. I'm writing it down. We'll see how we can maybe incorporate that. Um, who's Al Feldstein? Is he a, is he a, a claymation guy? Is he like a cloaky type of dude? Is he a, was he an artist for Mad Magazine? Little quail is just getting blasted with the uh, the fire extinguisher here. Just getting blasted. Oh, main main artist story border for EC Comics. Oh, yeah, that's right. They were a part of EC Comics. That's right. Is EC Comics still around? You know better than me. I I have not read comics in a while. Right, so this little, these, these little guys, they got these interesting little, okay, let's see. Thank you, Patrick. All right, so we're going to, we're going to try to, uh, okay, I'm, uh, let's see, we're going, we're going to get a little, a little tree frog, okay, a little tree frog head. We're going to go for the tree frog head. guys I don't draw animals really um or nature so this is a really you know we are really going for it here <laughs> it's little fingers yeah little fingers Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, this kind of, like, swoops over here. And it comes in like this. I'll be doing more of these, you guys. This has inspired me. This was originally in, um... Memorandum of... of Mort Drucker. When he passed away. Um, but I will be... I'll be doing more of these. I mean, this is, this is exciting, you know? And folks are getting a kick out of adding on to ribbit. Let's see. They're getting a kick out of adding, you know, seeing their suggestions come to life on here. He's got some spots. This dude has some spots, like a little, uh, little, like a little Dalmatian. Spilled can of soda. That's good. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Spilled can of soda. Hold on, I'm gonna write this down. Spilled. of soda. I'm writing this down. We're going to see. We're going to see how we can spill, get a spilled can of soda in there. But it's fun because, okay, so there's a little tree frog. Hey, hello there. I'm piggyback riding. As you know, the, the, what, the tree frogs are from, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. I would have never thought of adding a frog in there. So look at, so look at, you have helped add to this whole con conundrum. I was uh, trained in improvisation, the whole yes and spirit. And so I'm just yes anding this. These were all the, you know, these are some of the suggestions that people have given me. The eucalyptus juju soda. I love it. That is good. Yes, yes. I'll write that down. I'll write that down. Okay, so I got, okay, so we got the spilled can of soda right there. 
It'll be the uh, eucalyptus juju soda. I love it. You know what, Glam, that is a wonderful callback to Grace Band when they said he's dreaming of the eu eu eucalypti juju, right? You remember that? Oh, my God. Eucalyptus juju. Eucalyptus juju. I love it. You guys are even yes-anding each other, which really excites me. None of these suggestions that any of you have ever come up with, none of your suggestions are, are, are dismantling any of the other suggestions that people have. It's, it's, you know, this is a total, this is a total, you know, this really is. It's, we're all being trained here in improvisation. This is a skill that we take, we can take off into, into our, our lives and our daily interactions. It feels much better to say yes to an idea and to keep growing with that idea instead of just going, no, instead we do this. It's like just, we got, if so, you know, if someone's got an idea, you roll with it. You roll with it and you see where it goes. David Lynch calls those the happy accidents on set. So if some techni technical blunder happens on set, he rolls with it. He goes with it. He uses it. There's power in that of going, okay, and you add it to it. You add to the momentum. You go where the momentum wants to go. When we leave a certain amount of uh, space for the universe to speak through it, I mean, this is all coming from the universe, right? Thank you. This is all coming from the universe. So it's all coming from the same place. So if you have an idea and you have an idea and you have an idea, like, it's. I think it's, you know, it's very possible to... to to put it in there. It's very possible. And it's a lot of fun. It's called, you know, ensemble. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. Yeah. Eucalypti juju. Because this is, so you guys who are, who are joining us, so the whole idea is that this vampire, um, he's, in, he's in, and he's in quarantine, and he drinks the blood of koalas. And uh, Grace Band Lives made a comment. He said that he, he he loves he loves drinking that eucalypti juju, he, and uh, so then and that's why I put it in a thought bubble. He's dreaming of it, you know. But even the koala, even the koala is trying to do his best in uh, in being, you know, safe. Of course, we've got the classic "what me worry" in there, as Alfred Newman would would say. Someone mentioned an owl. Oh yeah, my little my little niece Gabriella. She mentioned an owl. I want to see an owl, and then. Um, what was it Jenny Quest? She goes, "Oh, what about the what about the Tootsie Roll owl?" I said, "Awesome." And then Space Patrol uh, said, "Well, wait, you might get in trouble for copyright infringement." And I thought, "Wait a second, how does Mad Magazine get away with it?" And so that's where the little guy showed up. How many licks to the center of a koala? <laughs> I mean, it just keeps growing. This, is the, you know, it's so funny, you guys. This is embracing the very spirit of Mad Magazine right here. What we're doing here. And I, I, I did not know that this is what, you know, n nobody knew that this is what was going to happen. Tina, who left us a little bit ago, she thought it'd be cool to, to have him dressed up sort of magician in a magician costume. Jenny Quest suggested he has a, a snake neck. So it just, I mean, it just grows and grows. There's, you know, when we're thinking outside of the idea of practicality, we, when, you, when, you, when you let go of the idea of pra practicality, you're opening your arms to all kinds of amazing imagination to really filter its way through. That's what it's all about. It's letting the imagination through. That's what the hell art is all about. Isn't that crazy? Did you guys see that quote? My sister um, posted it, and then I posted it, and it showed a little thing of Frida Kahlo, uh, the artist, and it was talking about how everybody now in the quarantine, they're all turning towards the musicians, they're turning towards the filmmakers, the artists, you know, those who create from the imagination. It's been said that even during recessions, even during, you know, depressions um, in the world, people will still sp spend money on entertainment. And it makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. Just imagine if more mothers and fathers had been supportive of their children's desires of of being, of being, uh, well, let's say Mad Magazine artists or, uh, 
musicians or, you know, if more parents had been supportive of that rather than discouraging their kids out of, from the place of fear, discouraging them from that and going, no, you'd be a lawyer or a doctor instead. That's where the money's at. They were looking at the idea, they were, it, it was all backwards. Money, money becomes a byproduct of what you're doing, what you love. That's the funny thing. Money becomes the byproduct of that. And yeah, we hear stories where people go, oh, well, my business closed or this closed. Well, that does not, you know, then you have to examine why, why did it close? Why did it close? What was the, what was the, um, how was that business run? You know, were all options explored? Were they all truly explored? How open of a mind was that business led with? How open of a mind? Was it led from an ego? Was it, or was it led from, an, from a let's go? Ooh, I just thought about that. Wow, that just popped into my brain. Is it ego or is it let's go? Let's go is yes and. That's what we're doing here today. Yes, and. If I was doing this whole thing led from ego, I'd be like, nah, I hate frogs. Nah, I'm not going to add a frog. Peacock feathers? Nah, I never drew peacock feathers before. Nah, nah, I don't want to do that. This little koala never had a mask on, and someone goes, he needs a mask. And I thought, how do we do this? Oh, okay, it'll be a, it'll be a transparent, it'll be like a clear-looking mask. It's, it, it's, you know, you get to surprise yourself that way. Art, art, uh, you know what, you guys, contrary to popular opinion, art does not have to be a torturous endeavor. No one, no one ever said that it was um, imperative for art to be a torturous endeavor. And a lot of folks, they'll romanticize that idea. Oh, I'm the tortured artist. No, this took me 22 years to make. Okay, congratulations. Awesome. And then another artist makes something, you know, in 10 minutes, without any struggle, without any torture, because they just, they got out of the way of themselves. They got out of the way of the ego. They let it shine through. And then they make, you know, all this money on it. And then the tortured artist who spent 22 years on his thing is wondering, how come, wait a second, you know, I spent 22 years making this thing. I deserve to be more famous or I deserve to have, uh, more money, you know, I, should, I, I deserve to make a million dollars off this painting because I spent 22 years making it. Well, that's not how it works. <laughs> it's just not, it's, it's not, that's not it. And so then you get those people becoming even more bittered and even more tortured and because they're, it's, it, they view it as a form of competition. You guys, this is not about competition. There's enough room for everybody to do exactly what they want to do and how they want to do it. There's enough room for everyone. Forget about oversaturation. Forget about lack of abundance. Those are all myths. Those are all constructs in a mind. I think this is why people are threatened by crazy people. Because crazy people, <laughs> they're, they're just like an open antenna, aren't they? They're just letting it all in. It's all in. It's there it is. <laughs> maybe it's, you know, maybe they're not preferring that. However, maybe that's a sign of a, uh, this, I'm just thinking out loud here, maybe that's a sign of, a, of, an, of an evolved mind. Those who are considered crazy. We've heard it time and time again, there's a thin line between genius and crazy. What if Salvador Dali would have ended up in a mental institution? What about Nikolai Tesla, Albert Einstein, any of those dudes? Any of those people back in the day, they could have said, you know what, this man is nuts. Let's lock him up. I'm, a, I'm almost going to cry just thinking about what would have happened if Salvador Dali was locked up in a mental institution. We never got a chance to see any of his art. And there he was in a mental institution destined to, to, to you know, make his, his, his astounding imagination uh, uh, right there in the mental institution. Then it just gets thrown away at the end of the day or what have you. And nobody gets a chance to see it. Ugh. Ugh. So, lesson, lesson here is art does not have to be torturous. Art is the last safe place we have available to us. Art is the imagination. 
imagination is our safe place. Imagination is where boundless things are supposed to be, you know, allowed. It's a boundless imagination. Boundless. That should be, you know, that should be a sacred place, a sacred area. We shouldn't have to... uh, make it torturous? I mean, come on. We're allowed to have safe areas. This is why it's important for artists, for anyone really, who creates things to have solitude. They deserve their solitude. That's where, you know, with, without, without someone over there looking over their shoulder going, you're doing it wrong. What? Why are you doing that? Huh? I don't get it. Then that caused the art, that causes the artist to doubt themselves. Thank you, Space Patrol. Just adding little details. So, oh yeah, oh yeah. So, Glamody suggested, and I love it. This okay. Uh, uh, so, Patrick, I, were you the one who said spilled can of soda? Who said spilled can of soda? Someone said spilled can of soda, and then Glamody said it's a, a can of eucalyptus juju, which I think is great. So let's see. We're gonna find a good spot for that spilled can of soda. Let's find a good spot for that spilled can of soda. Ooh, wouldn't that be funny? Wait. Spilled, oh, maybe it's tipped over. Maybe it's tipped over on its side. It could be here. I like to kind of mentally scribble, <laughs> you know, sometimes the possibilities, and then bleep, it could be dripping off his ear. Um, let's, let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Eucalyptus juju. Now, could be a big can of soda, like one of those monster cans. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Here we go, here we go. Eucalyptus juju. It's gonna just come kind of come right over the edge here. Bloop, 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 bloop. Here we go, folks. Cammon, what is going on? Welcome. We are doing some live drawing here based on suggestions. We just heard a brilliant idea. Spilled can of soda. Eucalyptus juju. Okay, eucalyptus juju. Because as you can see, this koala bear, EJJ soda brand. Okay, good, 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 good. Yes, I was wondering how I was going to write that on the can. EJJ, yeah. The eucalyptus juju. Um, so that you could tell that 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 uh, koala is a little, a little crazy. He's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. Sony. Look how this has evolved, Sony, since last time you were here. Look at it. Mr. Owl, how many licks to the center of a koala? Thank you. Look at it. We got a little tree frog back there. Poison, poison dart tree frog. Ooh, very interesting and symbolic. We didn't realize it. See? We got the koala up there. He's all nice and he's like, he's, he's protecting himself from coronavirus. However, dun, 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 poison dart treat frog. Of course, we got the snail over here sh- shooting the, uh, trying to put out the fire. But his little, uh, thank you. His little arms, you know, his little antennas. He's just like, eh, he's trying to hold it up. He's trying to hold it up, but he's squirting it in the wrong direction. So now we're going to get the uh, can of eucalyptus. Juju. 
I love it. You guys, we're learning the art of improv together here, aren't we? Spilled can of soda. Here we go. Here we go. Don Martin, one of my other favorite um, Mad Magazine artists, he would always put sound effects in his stuff. And so that we're gonna we're gonna continue with that tradition. So it's tipping over this over the side here, okay? Eucalyptus juju is tipping over the side. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, getting our little coming around. Coming around here. All right, now, get that little opening in there. Little opening here. And it is just, it's dribbling out of here. Sploosh, right? It's going to be splooshing, right? It's sploosh, right here in in the actual thought thought bubble. He's got some. Let's see. He's got some. Uh, some of it's dripping off his ear. <laughs> it'll be it'll be sp splattering off the thought bubble itself. Sploosh. Right, no, so let's continue with the can. Let's continue with the can. Uh oh, what do we, what do, we do here? What do we do here? All right, it's behind his ear. Okay. We're making a we're making a slight alteration here. You guys, I'm drawing things I've never drawn before. <laughs> Sploosh. <laughs> Thank you. Do a sp we're gonna make sure we put that sound effect in there too because you know the more you, I think the more that we can put someone into the actual reality of an of an art piece that's if you guys ever looked at art and you're just like oh I want to live inside that I want to crawl inside of that what is that like to be in there when I paint I like to put te textures in there because I'm, I hope that people touch the painting I want people to touch the painting you know, like it's like a living thing, you know? EJJ. That's right, EJJ. You gotta put the label on there. It's funny, it's like an energy drink. EJJ. E, let's see. EJJ. Fonk. Four. Let's see. J. Let's do. We'll go backwards. How about that? We we'll go backwards. Should I give a lowercase e? I'll give a lowercase e. Sha, sha. Okay, here we go. All 
right, somehow we pulled it off. What's up, Hidden Toots? <laughs> what a funny name, dude. What a great name. Thank you for appreciating the, the details here, Sony. So this is, that's Eucalyptus Juju, okay? The EJJ, that's Eucalyptus Juju. Um, all right, hold on, hold on. First, let me draw this shenanigan, and then we'll... So this, this, like, it's spilled, man. This juju, it is spilled. It's splution. This thing is splution. Fwonk. Look at that. Bam. Sploosh. Look at that. I'll write it on the side here. <laughs> Looks like it says blue show. That's fine. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Cox with the pox. I'm from Chicago. Chicago, my kind of town. Home of Al Capone. My great grandpa used to own a store that was directly across an alley. I could say this now because as far as we know, Al Capone is gone. Uh used to own a store that was directly across the alley from where Al Capone had one of his um, sort of secret lairs where they they would bring in the um, bring in that you know it was the Prohibition era they bring in the liquor so he had to keep his mouth shut yeah, to keep his mouth real shut. Pow. Sploosh. Sploosh. Look at it. Here we go. We got our spilled can of soda. <laughs> EJJ. Oh. Okay, it's now warning me. We got two minutes remaining. Two minutes remaining. This is good. I'm on this side of the camera this time. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> Say it. Yeah, you'll have to. Sploosh. So you guys, Yachtly Crew, um, the uh, Yacht Rock Band I'm in, we're going to be streaming live tonight on YouTube. So look up Yachtly Crew. Let me type it in. This is the title. We got a minute and 30 seconds here. This is the band. I know you don't have to put the umlaus because they're kind of tricky to type on a um, on just a laptop. But uh, we'll be going tonight. I'm not sure what time, but check check out the live stream. I'm gonna come right back. Okay, after this one minute is up, I th I'm having a lot of fun with you guys. So I'm gonna continue drawing. I'm gonna probably do one more hour of this, and then um, if you guys want to come back, you are more than welcome. You're invited, and keep adding because look, I still gotta. I want to try to add a mantis shrimp in there somehow. That was another great suggestion. So we got the spilled can of soda there. Eucalyptus juju. See that? We got EJJ. Sploosh in honor of Don Martin. You know, things is looking up. We got our little poison dart tree frog. There's a lot more. There's a lot more detail to be had here, folks. So shading textures. Oh, see that? We got the sound effects. <laughs> Ah, he's addicted to pets, as all cats are. More. It's a static electricity. You see the zap? I should put a little z zip zapper on it or something. So uh, 14 seconds left here. I will be back immediately, all right? I will be back immediately. Immediately. Sayonara, for now. <laughs>